hello everyone am i audible yes sir uh, guys uh, first let's start with your problems if you face if you faced any problem or have any doubt uh, related to the inverse trigonometric function please feel free to ask after that we will start the new chapter relations and functions you can send me your doubts either on chat or you can just speak up do as you are comfortable Okay, Shahid, uh, we don't have graphs in our slippers though, uh, but yes, we can understand uh, how the graphs are made for tan and cosec. Uh, what do you want to know about tan and cosec? Okay. Uh, ek short trick bhi uh, you guys are all comfortable in Hindi, right? Aaj Austin nahi hai to fir hum Hindi mein bhi baat kar sakte hai, koi dikkat nahi. Okay, cool. Uh, relation, uh, Shahid, uh, kya tum bhi JE ka preparation kar rahe ho? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So, yaar, uh, ek choti si baat batana chahunga, ke jab hi hum kisi inverse function ka graph banate hai na, to tu normal graph utha apna, y is equals to fx ka agar koi graph hai, fx can be anything, right? Uh, I'll, I'll add up here. So let's say there is y is equal to fx, and we have graph to make it. Yeah, let's say I have y is equal to fx ka graph given. Na? This graph is given. So y is equal to f inverse x ka graph. Na? will be symmetric about the line y is equals to x. Now, let's go over a little bit. How can we understand how we can understand? Why don't we have one second? One second. So let's say ये हमारे पास x is दिया हुआ है ना और मेरे पास कोई एक ग्राफ है भी कि है मेरी लाइन y is equals to x ठीक है अब हम क्या बोल रहे हैं कि अगर हमारे पास y is equals to fx का ग्राफ है तो y इक्वल्स टू f इनवर्स x का ग्राफ ना हमेशा इस लाइन के अबाउट सिमेट्रिक होगा फॉर एग्जांपल लेट्स से तेरे को y इक्वल्स टू tan x का ग्राफ पता है है ना अब y इक्वल्स टू tan x का ग्राफ होता है हमारे पास कुछ इस तरीके से डांसिंग कर बोलते हैं इसको अगर याद हो कुछ कुछ इस तरीके का ग्राफ होता है है ना तो अगर मुझे इस फंक्शन के इनवर्स का ग्राफ निकालना है यानी कि मुझे tan इनवर्स x का ग्राफ निकालना है तो बस जस्ट सिंपली इसका इस तरीके से बनता है ये ग्राफ तो जस्ट सिंपली इसका ही y is equals to x के अबाउट y is equals to x के अबाउट सिमेट्रिसिटी सिमेट्रिक फंक्शन का ग्राफ ले ले बेसिकली अगर तेरे पास ये ग्राफ y is equals to tan x का है तो इसको मिरर मानते हुए इसकी मिरर इमेज निकाल ले कुछ इस तरीके से चलो तो अगर ये हमारे पास y इक्वल्स टू tan x का ग्राफ था ये था y इक्वल्स टू tan x का ग्राफ तो ये हमारे पास 
मिरर इमेज की y इज इक्वल टू एक्स के अबाउट मिरर इमेज की तेरे को y इज टू टेन इनवर्स x का ग्राफ दे देगा तो इनवर्स फंक्शन का ग्राफ हमेशा कुछ ऐसा ग्राफ बन रहा होगा y इज इक्वल टू टेन इनवर्स x का ये स्केल्ड नहीं है एग्जैक्ट बट हाँ ये तेरे को मतलब स्केल्ड आज इनके मतलब ये बना हुआ स्केल नहीं है बट ये आ, अगर तू इसको बिल्कुल स्केल्ड बनाएगा ग्राफ के अंदर तो एग्जैक्टली वही वाई वाई जीवल्स टू टेन इनवर्स एक्स का ग्राफ आ जाएगा तो अगर कभी भी इनवर्स फंक्शन का ग्राफ निकालने का है किसी का भी इनवर्स फंक्शन का फॉर एग्जाम्पल तेरे को वाई जीवल्स टू एक्स स्क्वायर का ग्राफ पता है है ना तो वाई जीवल्स टू एक्स स्क्वायर का इनवर्स फंक्शन होगा रूट एक्स डू डू यू गाइज नो हाउ टू फाइंड आउट इनवर्स फंक्शन बाई दू अभी तक पता है किसी अच्छा कोई बात नहीं इनवर्स फंक्शन भी हम निकालना सीखेंगे अभी रिलेशन एंड फंक्शन के अंदर हम ये भी सीख रहे होंगे कि हाउ टू फाइंड एन इनवर्स फंक्शन फॉर अ गिवन फंक्शन किसी भी फंक्शन का इनवर्स फंक्शन निकाल सकते हैं ट्रिग्नोमेट्रिक फंक्शन के इनवर्स तो आपको पता ही है ये सीधे सीधे ऐसे ही लिख देते हैं हम साइन इनवर्स कॉस इनवर्स टैन इनवर्स एंड देन कॉट इनवर्स सेक इनवर्स कॉस इनवर्स बट और सारे इनवर्स फंक्शन को निकालने के लिए अभी हम बात करेंगे फंक्शन के अंदर इनवर्स फंक्शन निकालना सिखाया जाएगा आपको तो तब हम आपको ये भी बताएंगे कि इनवर्स फंक्शन कैसे निकालते हैं और इनवर्स फंक्शन का ग्राफ निकालने के लिए आपको नॉर्मल फंक्शन का ग्राफ पता होना चाहिए इनवर्स फंक्शन का ग्राफ आप बना सकते हो एक तरीका तो ये हुआ ये तो हमेशा हर किसी के लिए वैलिड है है ना बट अगर हम नॉर्मली बात करें कि यार किस तरीके से हम आ, निकालते हैं तो इसको हम यहाँ पे बता सकते हैं आपको रुकिए मैं ये सारा हटा दूंगा एक सेकेंड फिर हम जरा स्क्रीन पे आ जाए तो इससे पहले किसी भी फंक्शन का अगर आप नॉर्मली अगर आप ये सब रूल्स नहीं लगा रहे ये तो ग्राफिकल रूल्स है यहाँ पे आप अगर आपके चैप्टर पढ़ाया जाएगा वैसे आपको प्ले विद ग्राफ्स करके एक बुक भी आती है नितिन अग्रवाल की जिसके साथ आप काफी ग्राफ्स के बारे में सीख सकते हैं बट अगर आप उससे अलग हटे और सिर्फ ये बात करें कि जी हम इस फंक्शन का ग्राफ बनाना चाहते हैं हाउ टू डू दैट है ना तो आपको दो चीजें पता होनी चाहिए किसी भी फंक्शन का ग्राफ बनाने के लिए एक तो लेट्स से आपके पास y इक्वल्स टू एफ एक्स कोई भी फंक्शन है अब ये फंक्शन आपका इनवर्स फंक्शन भी हो सकता है नॉर्मल फंक्शन भी हो सकता है कुछ भी हो सकता है ये फंक्शन है एक्स राइट बट मैं इसका ग्राफ बनाना चाहता हूं तो इसका ग्राफ बनाने के लिए मेरे को दो चीजें पता होनी चाहिए डोमेन एंड रेंज और मोटा मोटा अगर मैं इनको समझू तो यार डोमेन होता है कि क्या तो होंगी x की वैल्यूज यानी कि इनपुट क्या है हमारा इनपुट हमेशा x माना जाता है और आउटपुट हमेशा रेंज बोला जाता है जिसको y बोलते हैं तो हम ये जानना चाहते हैं कि इस y इक्वल्स टू एफ के अंदर हम क्या क्या तो एक्सपुट कर सकते हैं और क्या क्या y के आंसर आएंगे उन x के लिए अगर आपको ये दो बातें पता है यानी कि उसका डोमेन और रेंज पता है तो आप किसी भी फंक्शन का ग्राफ बना सकते हैं अब नाउ लेट से लेट स्टार्ट विथ वाई इज टू टेन इनवर्स एक्स तो इसका डोमेन क्या है बता दो फटाफट हाँ शायद इसका डोमेन बताओ क्या है वाइज गुस्टो टेन इनवर्स एक्स का रियल नंबर एंड रेंज माइनस फाइव बाई टू टू फाइव है ना तो अब हमें ये पता है कि y की वैल्यूज माइनस फाइव बाई टू टू फाइव बाई टू रहेंगी है ना और x की वैल्यूज ऑल रियल नंबर्स हो सकती है ठीक है तो अब इसको कैसे समझना है तो यार देख थोड़ी सी वैल्यूज रख के देखो और पता कर लो बहुत इजीली हमें पता चल सकता है जस्ट गिव मी मिनट लेट्स ड्रॉ अ ग्राफ तो ये हमारे पास सबसे पहले तो एक टू प्लेन दिया गया है इसके अंदर हम ग्राफ बनाना चाहते हैं x की वैल्यूज ऑल रियल नंबर्स हो सकती है ना और y की वैल्यूज माइनस फाइव बाई टू टू फाइव बाई टू हो सकती है अब इसके अंदर वैल्यूज एक दो रख के पुट कर अगर x को जीरो रखेंगे तो y भी जीरो आएगा यानी कि ये ग्राफ ओरिजिन से पास हो रहा होगा एक चैप्टर आएगा बाई द वे एरिया बाउंडेड बाई कर्व है ना सेवेंथ चैप्टर होगा सेवेंथ होगा या एट होगा आई गेस वही चैप्टर है हमारे पास एरिया बाउंडेड बाई कर्व तो वहां पे हम एरिया के बारे में हाँ यारोसिकली वी आर टॉकउट हाउ टू ड्रॉ अ ग्राफ 
now how to draw a graph may I, I mean i will not discuss the whole thing about how to draw a graph because we have a chapter that is what i was talking about right now that we have a chapter area bounded by curves and uh, the chapter is i think seventh or eighth chapter in our syllabus so when we will go there uh, area bounded by curves i'll teach you how to draw a graph so what are the points that you have to uh, take in consideration to draw a graph and uh, in that case we will understand more about graphs as well but right now though i just want you to understand some things some, a very basic thing like how to draw a graph so to draw a graph just understand that uh, we need two things to draw a graph for any function we need its domain and its range so by domain we mean the values of x we can put in the function so let's say the function was y is equals to fx so we want to know what are the values of x that we can give to this function and for those values of x what are the corresponding values of y that is range of the function if we know these two things we'll be able to we'll be able to get all the related information on just a minute yeah good <clears throat> so now in this case we know that y is equals to tan inverse we want to find out the graph of y is equals to tan inverse x so its domain is all real numbers and its range is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 so first we try to understand whether the graph is passing through origin or not so to pass through origin x is equals to 0 and y is equals to 0 should be a solution of this graph or should be a solution of this function so i put x is equals to 0 tan inverse 0 then y is equal, y is also equal to 0 hence this graph is passing through 0 comma 0 if you put x 0 you get y 0 right now the domain is all real numbers right and range is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 if i put the positive values of x if i put the positive values of x right then i will get a positive answer i'll get a i'll get an answer from 0 to pi by 2 and if i put negative values of x then i'll get an answer from 0 to minus pi by 2 to 0 that is a negative answer right so let's put let's this let's say this point is pi by 2 and this point is minus pi by 2 see the range is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 right so range is the values of y so the highest value of y that is possible can be pi by 2 and the lowest value of y that is possible here is minus pi by 2 hence the graph has to be in between this minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 graph can't exceed this and neither can be below this minus pi by 2 now to draw this graph you understand the graph should be like this now why like this because see if if i put x as infinity right now i first of all i can't put the value of x as infinity because there is nothing infinity is nothing right we don't know about infinity we don't want to use infinity but we we use infinity as a concept right so now i'm right now i'm using infinity as a concept to make you understand what is happening here so if i put infinity here i'll get tan inverse infinity which should be pi by 2 right which means that as as the x gets bigger the value is closing to pi by 2 similarly if i put x as my the value of y is minus pi by 2 now i can't put minus infinity so i will understand it like this that as as i decrease x to minus infinity the value of y is closing in to minus pi by 2 so as soon as i decrease the values of x the values of y is also decreasing and as i increase x the value of y is also increasing so we have to focus on two three things when we draw a graph first of all domain and range this this is a must all of these things are must but uh, just to give you an idea we will be talking about this in detail in the chapter area bounded by curves but right now just to make you understand we will be using these concepts like first is domain and range we should know what are the values of x and what are the values of y that we can put here and then second is <coughs> oh Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, and second is, we should know the function either either the function is increasing or decreasing, increasing or decreasing, 
increasing or decreasing money that if you increase x what is the effect on y if i increase x what is the effect of increment in x on y so let's say if i increase it yeah so let's say if i increase x and y is also increasing with that then we say the function is increasing that with it i mean increasing means that if you increase the input then your output is also increasing and decreasing means that if you increase the input your output is decreasing so right now whatever i have written is increasing function this is increasing function that if x increases y is also increasing but a decreasing function says that uh, just a minute guys Sir. Anji. Uh, yes, Chavez was speaking. So do you write this? Uh, yeah, we are uh, learning how to draw a graph. So the problem is to draw, I mean, the question was to draw the graph of tan inverse x and cosec inverse x. So we are basically uh, learning about the skills of drawing a graph, how to draw a graph in, uh, I mean, do it yourself. If we want to draw a graph, how do we draw a graph? We'll be talking about these points in detail when we discuss the chapter area bounded by curves. Uh, in that chapter, we have to learn how to draw a graph. But abhi aapte hum, we are just discussing us some small points about how, how we are drawing the graph of tan inverse x. So first of all, we to draw a graph, we should know about domain and range of the function. Like in this case, for y is equals to tan inverse x, we know the domain is real numbers and range is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Then second thing is we should know about either the function is increasing or decreasing. Now increasing function means if you increase x, y should also increase. And decreasing function means if you increase x, then y is decreasing. So if x and y both have yes, the same repeat. nature. Yeah. Is Sorry, Shavis, kya bol rahe? My internet is slow, so I couldn't hear. Uh, so basically, we are talking about increasing and decreasing function right now. Increasing function is uh, increasing functions are those functions in which if you increase x, y is also increasing. And decreasing function is in when you increase x, but y gets, I mean, y is decreasing. So x okay. and y have opposite nature in decreasing function, and in increasing function, x and y have same nature. For example, y is equals to tan inverse x. Now, y is equals to tan inverse x. You can see that if you are increasing x, now increasing x money, you are going in this direction. See, this is from minus infinity to plus infinity, right? So if you are increasing, if, if you say that you are increasing x, so basically you are moving in the right hand side direction, right? Now, see, if you are in moving to the right hand side direction in this graph, then the graph is always up, always up, always up, always up, right? So this is an increasing function. That is how you can check whether a function is increasing or decreasing, that you start moving to the right hand side. If the graph is going upwards while moving rightwards, see, now, um, are, are you understanding my point? Did you understand what, what I'm saying? That as soon as you move, start moving on this graph, positive, so it will be increasing if it's going yeah. towards positive. Yes, right. If you are moving towards the right hand side, the graph is always upwards. The graph is always upwards. So this is an increasing function. Now let's let's see an example for decreasing function also. This is a decreasing function. 
this is a decreasing function that as soon as you are increasing towards or as soon as you are going towards the right hand side direction the graph is going downwards so when you say that we are increasing x y is decreasing so this is an this is a decreasing function and this is an increasing function so we know that tan inverse x is an increasing function that is why the graph is like this so these are some points which we took take care of while we draw a graph but to draw a graph either you apply the rule of symmetricity about line about the line y is equals to x or you apply these rules which we will uh, learn in detail in the chapter area bounded by curves But based on this discussion, can you draw the graph of all the inverse trigonometric function, Shahid? Yes, sir. Just follow that y is equals to x wala thing. Yeah. I mean, that will be really helpful in this in these cases. <sighs> to draw more difficult graphs, we need to know some more points that we will discuss in detail while we study area bounded by curves. But for all the inverse trigonometric functions, just follow the rule that all the inverse functions graph are symmetrical about the line y is equals to x. Okay, whoever was not present in the class, uh, we discuss one more thing before this. Uh, can I remove this? Yes, sir. So there is one more function, right, which is not decreasing or increasing. Yes, correct. There, are, I mean, there can be functions who are neither decreasing nor increasing. Okay, cool. Uh, so we discussed one more thing. So let's say we know the graph of y is equals to fx. y is equals to fx is a function and its graph is known to us. Right. Now we want to draw the graph of y is equals to f inverse x. Then its graph is symmetrical. Its graph is symmetrical about the line y is equals to x with fx. What does it mean? So it means is that let's say you have the graph for y is equals to tan x. And now you want to find out the graph of y is equals to tan inverse x. So if you know this graph, you can easily draw this one. How? So let's first draw y is equals to 10x graph. This will be really helpful in all the trigonometric, inverse trigonometric function. Particularly in, in all the inverse trigonometric function, this is really helpful. Although this is true for anything, any, any function, but in these cases, this is used most, I mean, this is mostly used to draw the graph of inverse trigonometric function. Okay, so this is the line y is equals to x, okay? This is your x-axis, this is your y-axis, and this is the line y is equals to x, correct? Now, we know the graph of tan x. The graph of tan x is something like this. This goes like this. And this side, this goes like this. Now, to draw the graph of y is equals to tan inverse x, you just need to take, you just need to take its mirror image about the line y is equals to x. Mirror image about the line y is equals to x. Now you can remove this. This was the original graph. Remove the original graph. Remove this line y is equals to x. This is the graph of y is equals to tan x, tan inverse x. <clears throat> By this, you can understand how we are drawing all the graph I and mean, the graphs of all the inverse trigonometric functions. <clears throat> but this is an important rule which will which will come handy for all the people who are preparing for competitive exams. Okay, so we discussed these two things and also you guys are free, you guys are free to discuss or to ask any doubt. Please feel free to ask your doubts. So first we'll be taking all, all of your doubts and then we'll start with the class.
guys uh, if you have any problem any doubt please you can send me your doubts in chat or you can just speak up where will they ask us this they have an exam Uh, yes, Charles. What were you saying? So will they ask us to draw this graph in exam? Ah, so you have an exam for maths? No, 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 sir. Like I mean, uh, do they ask this uh, to draw uh, this graph in exam? Uh, no, 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 no. You won't be asked to draw the graphs in exam. Yes, sir. Just for your knowledge part. Okay, in that case, we can start <clears throat> with the next chapter. Am I audible, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So then let's start with the next chapter. And our next chapter will be relations and functions. Now, I consider this chapter very important uh, for the purpose of calculus because, and we have. Uh, we have also studied this chapter in detail in class 11 <clears throat> and one of my favorite chapter as well because without this we will not be able to understand calculus and this chapter is really important for all the je experience sir this chapter many things were deleted for me 11th yeah from 11th also and from 12th also so in when we talk about this when we take this chapter on cbsc level this is very small you don't have to learn many things in the chapter. But if you talk about the chapter on J level or competitive level, then this chapter is really, really, really important. So uh, I, I also have videos on this, on YouTube for this chapter. I mean, I've been teaching J batches in the previous years. So for that, we have cover these chapters in detail so you can take help from that or you will get a lot of videos from youtube from others other teachers as well but i would say whoever is preparing for competitive exams just focus on the chapter this chapter is really important i mean we can cover all the graphical things as well as a lot of other things about functions types of functions in this and that would make a really solid understanding of calculus Otherwise, you will be facing difficulties in differential calculus as well as integral calculus. So, the amount of uh, what expert expertise in calculus is responsible. I mean, the amount of expertise in this chapter is responsible for the amount of expertise in calculus. So, the chapter is really important, but. Uh, in our level, I mean, in CBSC level, we don't have to do much things. So we'll be studying first relations here 
and after relations we'll go to functions okay let's start with the relations first and before starting relations i would really like to give you an idea about sets so let's start with the basic discussion why are we even studying relations and functions and all of these things so okay just a bit and my handwriting is not that bad but i have changed my pen tag this thing which i write on and i am not accustomed to this i mean with expertise so that is why it's not written but i mean it's not written properly but whenever you have any confusion please feel free to ask me okay i know that the handwriting is not good right yeah so let's come to the relations but before that let's come to the sets anji tell me what do you understand by sets barring fahad anyone can answer no yeah, because fahad is my student from the last year also so we have studied these sets and relations what what do you understand by sets can someone tell me the what of a definition of quickly the definition of sets what is a set a distinct objects sorry collection of distinct objects collection of distinct objects uh just a minute here yeah sorry uh, uh so guys everybody has to stay for the after assessment test <clears throat> there will be a test conducted on inverse trigonometric functions so please stay for that test in the class uh yes so uh yeah what were we discussing set yeah collection of distinct objects right but was it just this or there is there is there should be one more point i think we should focus on one important word is distinct and another important word is well not defined just is well defined correct so we have to basically focus on two things that set is a well defined collection of well defined collection of distinct objects now the two things are important here first is well defined and second is this distinct what do you understand by well defined so let's take an example i'll ask a question please everybody answer what are, what are your two two favorite movies let's start with austin austin what are your two favorite movies uh, uh the office sir movies it's a tv show but okay yeah. and and that's all for watch anything else i think so i'm sorry which one up up you be up okay let's i i'll put mine here so my two favorite movies are inception and let's take one Okay, I mean, there are a lot of movies. Let's let's see. Let's say Pulp Fiction. 
have recently watched this movie. Okay, Fahad. Koi bhi bata de yaar do movie. Koi bhi bol sakta hai. Anyone can answer this. I mean, you can also answer this. Anyone from Fahad, Mamudin, Muhammad, Tariq, and Shavis. The Batman. Batman and. Uh, let's say someone other I don't know. Now the thing is, see, in this case, uh, I, I just want these three answers only. When we discuss, when we say there's something well defined, right? So well defined means if I ask your two favorite movies and all of us answers the same. Now, let's first answer this question. What are the first five natural numbers? If I ask Austin, uh, Austin, what is your answer for first five natural numbers? One, two, three, four, five. Right, correct. And all of us answers the same. Uh, I mean, all of us will answer the same. That one, two, three, four, five are the first five natural numbers. So this is well defined. Well defined money. Everybody answers the same. That that is un answer should be universally same for everyone. If answer is universally same for everyone, then we say that this thing is well defined. And so whenever we say that we are forming a set, set is always formed with well-defined objects. That is objects that are same for everyone. You can also you can only form a set with well-defined objects, and also the objects should be distinct. Objects should be distinct. Money. If you are writing one, two, three, four, five, it means that you can use one, two, three, four, or five any number of times you want, right? So if you if I give you a set, it means that I have given you these five objects. I mean. Let's say, let's name this set as A, B, C, D, E. We can name this set with any capital letter. And if I'm giving you this set A, for example, then I'm giving you these five objects and you can use these five objects as many times as you want. <clears throat> no, just a minute, Shai is also joining the class. Yeah. So when I say that the object should be well-defined, it means that the object should be universally same for everyone. If I ask you a question, the answer should be same for everyone. If that is, I mean, if the, if the question is following this trend, then we say the objects are well-defined. If the objects are universally same for everything, everyone, or let's say if I ask you a question and the answer is same for everyone, then that those objects are well defined. And by distinct, we mean that objects should not repeat. So let's say I give you this set A, which consists one, two, three, four, five. It means that I have given you five objects, which, which are one, two, three, four, and five, five numbers. You can use them as many times as you want. Now, if you write this set as one, two, three, three, four, five. So you are basically repeating three. It doesn't mean anything. Repeating, uh, repeating, a, repeating an object inside a set is meaningless. Why? Because it doesn't mean that you can use three twice now. You can use three as many times as you want once you write that inside a set. Repeating that same object is meaningless. That doesn't signify anything. That doesn't signify anything. That doesn't add up to anything. No. So we do not repeat our objects inside a set. If there is an object inside a set, you can use that as many times as you want. You don't need to write it twice, thrice or four times. Okay. And the second thing is the object should be well defined. So we have sets and sets can be written like now we know that there are two forms of set. This is, can you tell me what is this form? <clears throat> there were two types of, I mean, we can write sets in two forms. One is roster form, right? And no. second is set builder form. Yeah. So which one is this? One, two, three, four, five. Builder form. No. Builder form to jisme hame build karna padega. In which we have to build. This is roster. Roster. Now, if I write this set as A is a set of X such that, so colons are read as such that. Mathematics is a language. I mean, Let's see, sorry, 
mathematics doesn't have its language, right? So sets is the basically the language of maths. If you want to understand, if you want to understand the meaning of set, this is the language of maths. This will give you a lot of symbols. Now, what is the language of maths? Symbolic. Maths, maths talk in symbols. So basically set will give you a lot of symbols which have different, different meanings and which we'll be using over the course of all of these 32 or whatever, these 28 chapters according to, I think, your uh, CBC level, right? That is why you studied set in the first chapter. I mean, set was the first chapter because we will be using a lot of symbols from the set throughout the course of maths for 11th and 12th. So this is X. Now we are saying that A is a collection of objects X such that X belongs to natural numbers. Now this symbol is belongs to, will be used a lot in calculus, belongs to. So X belongs to natural numbers, right? And X is less than equal to five. Now, if you understand this statement correctly, they both are same. Here we are saying that X is natural number. So X will start from one. So X can take values one, two, three, four, five. But we are saying that X should be less than equal to five, which means that they both are same. But the representation is different. So this one was roster. This one is set builder form. Right. So this was the basic introduction with set. Now, what can we do with sets? We can. <clears throat> okay, just a minute. This is not well defined. Now, why we are studying relations and functions? Let's come to the point. We are studying. Anji. So now why we are studying relations and functions, we can always connect two sets. To connect two sets or to find a relationship between two sets, we use relations and functions. To connect two sets, we use relations and functions, first of all. Now what is the use of relations? Let's start with this. Mm. Guys, give me a minute. Let me check your syllabus first. Uh, we can open the syllabus in this way. Then we'll start. Yeah. Types of relations, reflexive, symmetric, transitive, and equivalence relations. One to one and on to functions. Oh, this is oh, I mean, most of the topics are already eliminated. Okay. No worries. Yes, so let's uh, do you guys know about relations a bit? Have you do you remember what what was a relation? Should we start with the very basic part? I am just I just want to know that should we start with the very basic part or we can start with the with directly from relations? Okay, I'll know this. You just solve this question. Okay, you just solve this question. Yeah, we will, I mean, this question will help you in each case if we have to start 
ऑस्टिन दैट इज ओके वो तो हमें पढ़ना ही आई मीन दैट विल बी रीडिंग दैट विल बी लर्निंग वो तो आई ऑलरेडी टीच यू बट आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू नो वेदर यू नो दीज थिंग्स और नॉट एंड दैट आई विल गेट टू नो अबाउट द आंसर फ्रॉम द आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन सो फॉर्म आर रिलेशन आर ओके ट्राई दिस वन एवरीबडी हैज टू टेल मी द आंसर इन चैट बॉक्स ओनली नोट टेल मी द आंसर आई मीन पैसे i want answers from everyone if you are not able to answer this then we have to start from the beginning only uh shay this is wrong no but think about it you can do this very good austin mm yeah correct mm austin just you have you have forgot one part one pair no shavez no shavez and shai both have answered the same by the way but this is wrong i think austin we have uh, taken a class on relations and functions with you and maria am i correct no sir i don't know yeah no no sir okay i think someone was there in the in that class we have took a class on relations and functions there needs to be more pair shahid and shavez more pairs would be there okay so how do we start this how do we form a relation we put a value of y and we check what are the values of x that are possible here or vice versa that we put a value of x and we check what are the possible values for x here no okay let's start let's start it like this you put a value of x what value of x now x and y both belongs to a it means that the values of x and y will come from this set a right nah? so you can start putting the values like this Put a put a give a value for x. Let's take one. Okay. So now, if x is one, solution is like this. If x is one, then what are the possible values of y? Okay. So you put x as one. Then y plus one, right? In this relation or in this rule, I put x as one, which means that if you take one right hand side wala one to the left hand side, it becomes Zero less than y, or you can interpret it as interpret this like y should be greater than zero. So if your x is one, y should be greater than zero. Now what are the possible values for y? Set a one two three. Is one greater than zero? Yes. Is two greater than zero? Yes. Is three greater than zero? Yes. So it implies that y can take values one two three. Again, again. Now give the value, second value of x. X is two. Now if x is two, it means that this relation is true, right? 
2 should be less than y plus 1. You could have started it with the values of y also. But whatever you are starting with, just, just hold on to that value only. 